بسم الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته التحية للجميع والتحية لابنتنا الدكتورة نازك uh, for her presentation today at this journal club و tomorrow you will be having a lecture on uh, critical appraisal I think uh, for this is the second or the third journal club بدأت لينا الدكتورة هنيدا وبعد ذاك حسين و Today is Nazik. I hope for you a very beneficial presentation. Tafadhali, Dr. Nazik. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am Dr. Nazik Azzaddin Ali Al-Hilo, Arab board trainee in my second year. First of all, I want to seize this opportunity to express our heartfelt thanks uh, to all our consultants and specialists Specialists, especially Dr. Abdel Ghani, Dr. Yasser, Dr. Ahmed, for their enormous and valuable efforts to teach, support, and guide us despite all these difficulties that we are encountering nowadays. And I hope peace for our beloved country. I would like to present uh, the journal club for today. Today, the article is about uh, comparative effectiveness of pharmacotherapies for the risk of attempt or completed suicidal suicide among persons with borderline personality disorder. This study was published this year in one of the most credible journals, which is which is the Journal of American Medical Association. I will give you some information about this journal. Uh, the Journal of American Medical Association is a peer-reviewed medical journal published uh, 48 times a year by the American Medical Association. It published original research, reviews, and editorial covering all aspects of biomedicine. It has an impact factor about 157, which is considered the second top in the world in 2023. Uh, just commenting, I think you guys know what is that an impact factor, what is it used for? An impact factor is the fact, and this is a measurement for how reputable is the journal. It depends on basically what, they don't accept any, any, any article. It's very extensive peer review, and basically they get cited. Any article gets published there, it gets cited multiple times, and usually good journals go from after five, three, five, the impact factor is three, five, ten. These are good journals. And I've never heard about 257. But that speaks to exactly oh. how reputable this journal is. Oh. Next, please. I believe all of you are wondering why I have chosen this study. Um, actually, I encountered this study while I was preparing for a lecture about the management of suicidal attempts. And I found that there are no similar extensive observational study like this one. And also, uh, although more than one third of individuals with borderline personality disorder have ADH symptoms, the association between ADH medication and uh, suicidal behavior has remained unexplored. Despite the presence of evidence that suggesting that it decreased the risk of suicide in a patient with ADHD and borderline. Um, also, there are just a few clinical trials with inconclusive results that have explored the efficacy of pharmacotherapy in reducing the risk of suicide in, these, in those patients. Next, please. As we all know, suicidal behavior is a significant clinical concern in individuals with borderline personality disorders. And I will provide you with some facts regarding this. Suicidal ideation and attempt in uh, this individual have a lifetime prevalence uh, about, estimated by about 84% to 94%, with approximately 5% to 10% who die at committing suicide. In addition, 56% of suicidal patients who have been admitted to psychiatric hospital have found to have borderline personality disorders. And although psychotherapy partic and particular, particularly dialectical behavioral therapy have proven its effect in uh, 
reducing the suicidal behavior. However, the antidepressant, antipsychotic mood stabilizers or benzos are uh, routinely used. Next, please. The objective of this study is to compare the effectiveness of different pharmacotherapy preventing attempts or completed suicide in patients with borderline personality, and it was conducted in Sweden. Next, please. The type of this uh, they use, the type of study that they use, uh, were cohort study, ret uh, retrospective cohort study. And as we all know, the study generally examined the relation between exposure and outcome in group over a period of time. And it has a two types, retrospective and prospective. The retrospective look back in time, as we will see in, our, in this study, and the prospective follow a group over time. The participants in this study was, were residents of Sweden between the age of 16 and 65 years having registered as, as having borderline personality and uh, were registered in the database. And the period of time was between the January 1st, 2006 and the end of June, 2021. The total number of the patient was 22,601 patients. With borderline personality disorder, 16% of them were men. And the exclusion criteria were individual with comorbid non-affective psychotic disorders, bipolar disorder, psychotic depression, and personality disorder other than borderline personality disorder. They collected their data from the National Swedish Register database of inpatient clinics, specialized outpatient clinics, sickness, absent, disability pensions. And uh, they analyzed their study, they analyzed their data from September to December 2022. They used a within individual design in which each patient was used at their own control to eliminate the selection bias. And uh, to control to control the protopathic bias, they use they uh, they analyze sensitivity analyze were conducted. I think some of you are wondering what is protopathic bias. It's uh, the protopathic bias actually occur when medication initiation is in response to an early symptoms before before confirming the diagnosis. So in this study, the uh, first and second months of medication, exposure were omitted from the analysis. Next, please. Uh, just, they just, use a, just a point here, uh -huh. and not to interrupt you, but just to explain a little bit more about the prototypic, prototypical uh, bias. Um, as an explanation, let's say somebody is in the hospital, yeah, the patient with borderline personality disorder had to be admitted to the hospital uh, for aggressive behavior, for agitation, you're more lucky than not to be, you know, just give me a second, I'll have to answer this one. Alish, I'm sorry. Uh, so let's say somebody gets admitted to the hospital after a suicidal attempt. You're more likely to, and for depression, you're more likely to be started on antidepressants. Somebody gets admitted for agitation and depression, they're more likely to be started on antipsychotics or mood stabilizers. The effect of medication is usually linked to the symptoms that led them to be in the hospital. Just to avoid the severity that happens in association with the presentation, they don't want to, uh, to study the period immediately after the hospitalization because it might be associated with a change in severity. That's why, like, I mean, in order to avoid this, they skipped the immediate period after the treatment for one or two months to make sure like, you know, this is not, this is not a different population. It's not, it's not biased because of the symptoms. They want to study the longitudinal effect of the medicine rather than an acute effect. Okay, thank you. They use the uh, PRE-T2-DUP, uh, which is a mathematical method that calculates the drug usage period from prescription uh, drug purchased. 
This method actually give a highly accurate uh, drug usage period. However, we can still uh, argue that it does not 100% reflect the actual usage. Also, it measures the hospital stay and medicine stock pooling. And uh, util oh, they utilize this model, utilize it to model the data from drug dispensing to drug usage period. Next, please. Just, just again, because this is a little bit confusing, and I think what they try to do is a little bit unique. They're trying to see exactly the effect of the medicine on the long term. They have data about patients. They don't have, they don't have uh, participants in the study. This is a retrospective study. So in order to yeah. know if the patient took the medications or not, they have no way of going back and checking if the patient took the medication or not. So they use a proxy. The proxy is to see exactly if the patient was on the medicine or not, is to see if the patient was prescribed the medicine, uh, dispensed the medicine from the hospital information, or even, even as a prescription sent to the pharmacy. So that's a proxy to see if the patient was on the medicine. Yeah. And, 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 and I think it, it's what they, what they have done. I think, yes, they check also the pattern of usage from the but what they found in their data, registered data. Okay, next please. Uh, the primary exposure was a group level medication treatment, for example, antidepressant, uh, and they investigated exposure at the level of a specific agent, such as cutapine as a standard exposure. The reference for each treatment was the non-usage of the medication group. And then they categorized the treatment exposure as follow, antipsychotic, antidepressant, mood stabilizer, they exclude lithium, and benzodiazepine, benzodiazepine and ADH medication. And they compared them all using hazardous ratio. Uh, the confident um, interval was 95%, which is reflect the true mean of population, and they used the corrected B-value. Okay, before we proceed, I mean, and this is a question for everybody. So, why did they choose this design? What is the question of the study? What are they trying to answer? A anybody can answer from the people who read the study. What is the question? What are they trying to achieve from this study? It's an open question. Can Nazik answer? Can I answer? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Oh, okay. They want to measure. They want to measure the risk. Are you asking about why they use the hazardous ratio or uh, or what this? Is, uh, what is the question of the study? What are they trying to achieve by doing a study to begin? They want to reach a, a conclusion whether to use this medication in decreasing the risk or wh whether to avoid this medication. Okay. And, and several medications have been used for borderline personality disorder. Again, the gold standard is dialectical behavioral therapy. They want to see if these medications are effective or not effective. They're helpful. Are they hazardous yes. or not hazardous? Or not hazardous. And, and again, and this is exactly hazardous. Basically, it's associated, the measure you can see is basically association with suicide attempt or uh, completion. And you want to see if the, the medication had an effect in increasing or reducing suicide attempts or completion. So it's through association. Mm. Can you please proceed to the uh, design? There is an illustration for the design. It will, and then we can return to this slide. Yes. This is an illustration for the study design. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, they use in within individual design, where uh, each patient has their own stratum. And as we can see here in this illustration, um, drug A in orange, drug B in pink, and uh, the non-usage of the drug, blue color. And again, they reintroduced that there was a um, reuse usage for drug B, and it stopped before the end of the um, observational study. L let and me, all this was yeah, let okay. me try to try to help with explaining this process okay when we try okay. to check for the risk of knowing if the drug is associated with the risk or not okay you compare with the using of the drug with non-use of the drug an example yes if taking a 
And you want to think infloxetine is, in, is associated with increased risk of suicide. You compare taking fluoxetine with, with patient not taking fluoxetine at all. So this is your comparison group. He, here, the patient is, the, the comparison is the patient himself at a different, or herself, it's, it's a different standard, so yeah, different time frame. Yes. And, and you, you want to see the comparison here while the patient is taking fluoxetine. How long did the patient, how many suicidal attempts occurred when the patient is taking fluoxetine? When the patient... Yeah medication how many suicidal attempts occurred when the patient was not taking fluoxetine or, or not taking any medication over that long period of time and you yes, see, exactly and you create the rate uh of the incident of these of these process how many suicidal uh -huh. attempts on the medication how many suicidal attempts over like not on the medication and then you compare the risk ratio that's the risk ratio and more details i think he, he, she will share more details now. yeah uh, as we can see, the, here there is a usage of drug A, drug B, and then the, there is a period of non-usage. And then the drug B was introduced. After that, uh, they stop ta the patient stopped taking the uh, drug. Um, okay. Then after each event, it's obviously there is a two events. One uh, happened during the patient, uh, which the event they mean here, the attempt of suicide. That it happens while the patient taking the medications. Okay. and Again, it happened after introducing drug B. So what they are doing, they are measuring the time period between uh, the start of the cohort or the, the, the start of cohort study and the first outcome event. Okay, and then they measure, and then they reset the time again to zero and measure the time period between the first event and the second event. And again, they resetting the time and measuring the period between the second outcome and the censoring, uh, and the censoring. What we mean uh, by censoring? Uh, censoring is the, um, it's the time where there is no a definite event. As we can see here, from it's the time from the last event to till the end of the observational study. Okay. They compare all. They they get the result. They they measure the time and then they compare uh, the time interval or we call it a survival rate, okay? They, 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 the survival, they measure it in the first uh, period, the second period, and the third period, okay? And they use a Cox model, a Cox model, sorry, a Cox model, uh, which is a statistical method to measure the survival time outcome. With, the, with, with all these predictors and a difference, they usually enter this data uh, into a Cox analytic program, which is a computerized uh, program, to uh, where it treated and result generated. And it provides us with the uh, hazardous ratio and the B value where we can compare our medication. Uh, our results, sorry, <laughs> our results. Okay. So um, in the next slide, just um, selected for you a video to illustrate my point more. Thank on you. The, the majority of clinical studies are designed so that- the No, 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 not, the, not this one. Sorry, sorry for interruption. No, the not this one. Yes. This video this is about Cox proportional hazard survival Viral regression or Why, Cox regression go? for sure. Can you see? Yeah. So let's start right away with the first question. What is Cox regression? Cox regression is used in survival analysis to determine the influence of different variables on survival time. This is done with the Cox proportional head. Sorry, what, so why does this come up, Nazik? I'm not sure. Can you try to take it away? It's an error. Yeah, I think it's an error. Right? To ensure that all. Okay. Sorry, uh, it, it seems right, like. Right, right click and delete. Not my CV when you. Um, yeah. Yeah, it seems like this is how it came to me. So I can't. It's difficult to change it now because it's just sitting in the phone. Let me just. Survival give me analysis. One give me one second. I'll try to take this out. Just right click uh, and delete. Yeah. It's. Um, no. 
you, you can minimize it. Actually. Move it, move it. Can you, the... can you put it aside? Move it to a side or something? No, can you move it? I can't minimize it. I can't. Uh, it, it yeah, yeah, please move it. Thumbnail, so I can't move it. So I'm trying to move it. I'm trying to minimize it. I can't. So let me just see what I can else do. Um, yeah, it's just the way I think, Mark. I think the way you save the first video, somehow it's it's embedded in it. That's why it is. Um, okay. Uh, I see. It's, uh, sorry about that. So I, oh, let's just give me one second if I can see if I can um, get rid of it. Um, it's, it's not, it's not, I can't put it down. Um, Okay, so that's, that's bring me out. Medical the, files describe uh, how an outcome is affected by exposure. Incidence rates describe the effect of exposure on the outcome. I can get rid of it, but I can't get rid of it here. No, I'm afraid, Nazik, I can only just play it. I don't think, unless you oh. have to. Yeah. Okay. Would that be okay? Okay. Yeah. That's model. So what exactly is survival time analysis? In survival time analysis, the survival times of subjects are measured and a survival curve is plotted. Usually the subjects have some kind of disease. The survival curve then shows how many of the subjects remain alive over time. The time considered does not have anything to do with the survival time. Nevertheless, one speaks of the survival time and the survival time analysis. Generalized, we can say in survival time analysis, a variable is considered that has a start time and when a certain event occurs, an end time. The time between the start time and the end is considered in the survival time analysis. The time Okay, and I'll try to share it from my end because um, they didn't call me yet. So I'll try to share it from my end. I don't. Th I think I have it without that video. Just a second. Okay. Yeah. What well, do you want me to do? Yeah. Uh, okay. Do you have the screen from my end? Do you see yeah. my screen? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah we can see it. All right. Uh, Who said the video? The video is about Cox proportional hazard survival regression or Cox regression for short. The sound is gone. Can you hear? No, the sound is gone. Sound. Okay, give me a second. Click again, yes, on it. Click again on it again. This video is about cost can you hear? proportional. Yeah, yeah. No, can hear, no. no, there's something with yeah. for short. So let's start right away with the first question. What is Cox regression? Cox regression is used in survival analysis to determine the influence of different variables on survival time. This is done with the Cox proportional hazards model. So what exactly is survival time analysis? In survival time analysis, the survival times of subjects are measured and a survival curve is plotted. Usually the subjects have some kind of disease. The survival curve then shows how many of the subjects remain alive over time. The time considered does not have anything to do with the survival time. Nevertheless, one speaks of the survival time and the survival time analysis. Generalized, we can say in survival time analysis, a variable is considered that has a start time and when a certain event occurs, an end time. The time between the start time and the event is considered in the survival time analysis. The time can be measured, for example, in days, weeks, or months. Now, of course, there is the big problem that a study has limited resources. For resource reasons, and simply because one wants to publish the results at some point, there is a start and an end date of the study. If a case does not have a definite event, it is referred to as 
censored. Several methods have been developed to deal with this issue. Please have a look at my video on the Kaplan-Meier curve. But now back to the Cox regression. For example, if you want to analyze survival time after a disease is detected, you are often not interested in survival time per se, but in what has an influence on survival time. So we want to know if survival time depends on one or more factors, the so-called predictors. For simple situations with a single factor with only two values, the log rank test is used. So for example, if you want to test whether there is a difference in survival time when two different drugs are given to a patient. However, if you want to include the age of the subjects, for example, a special type of regression is needed, namely the proportional hazard survival regression. The regression should then evaluate the effects of the individual predictors on the shape of the survival curve. So as predictors, we have the drug use and the age of the person. I want to know what influence these variables have on the survival time curve. And we do this with the Cox regression. Let's look at an example. Let's assume this is our data we want to evaluate. Each row describes a patient with the corresponding disease. The time indicates when the event or death occurred. Here we have the data which drug was used and here we have the age of the people. The first step, we must now calculate the Cox regression, which we do online with data tab. Then we go through how to interpret the results. Calculate the Cox promotional hazard survival regression. We simply go to datadep.f and copy our data into the table. Just copy and paste as an X. Now we click on survival and under this step, depending on which variables you click on, different methods of survival analysis will be calculated. If you only click on the time and the status, the kaplan meyer curve will be displayed. If you click on the drug, you will get the log rank test. And if you click on the age, you will get the Cox. Here below, you get the results. Let's have a closer look. The first column contains the names of the variables. The first row indicates the variable drug, and the second row indicates the age. The most important of this table is the estimated regression coefficient and the p-value. With the p-value, you can see if the regression coefficient is significantly different from zero. So the null hypothesis is, in the population, the coefficient is zero. Let's say as we set our significance level at 5%, then for p-values less than 5% or 0.05, the null hypothesis is rejected and the coefficient is significantly different from zero. In the case of drug, the p-value is less than 0.05 and therefore we have a significant difference from zero. In the case of age, we get a p-value of 0.2 which is greater than 0. Therefore, in this case, the null hypothesis is not rejected, and we assume from this data that age has no significant effect on the survival curve. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time. Thank you very much. I hope, it, I hope it's well explained now. Can we proceed? Um, we'll give Ahmed to share back again. I can be made. Oh, okay, Ahmed can, Ahmed can come out of this. عليكم السلام أيوة. it's an excellent طبعا هي article very interesting بعدين طبعا جمال ال ال cohort studies دائما خاصة من تكون respective إنها طبعا it is it is a quick study ممكن تعمل بسرعة لأن data already عندك 
ات از ريليتيفلي تشيب كومبيرد مثلا لار سي تي ولا حاجه زي كده وطبعا خاطر ما تكون عندك هنا انت اساسا هي الريزلت هي يعني كومبليتد سويسايد مش كده فاصلا ما عندك طريقه تعمل حاجه بيرسبكتيف لا تقعد سنين طويله يعني فالستدي ديزاين از ريلي جود مع ال مع ال مع ال مع ال مع الحاجه اللي هم دي وانت ستدي لكن حاسس بس انا كنت عايزه اخش في حاجه بسيطه في ال في الستاتستكس حاسس لما كان بيورينا في الحته بتاعت ال 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 السيجنيفيكانس يعني الناس بس تكون عارفه يعني مهمه طبعا تعرف الستاتستيكال اناليز حقت الحاجات وهاو دي كم للريزلتس حقتهم لكن في طبعا كويك وينز كده يعني لما تعال مثلا حصل اللاست ايمج اللي شفناه دي مين ما تشوف انت مثلا البي فاليو اكبر من 0.05 يا خلاص يو نو طوال انه ما سيجنيفيكانت فيعني عارفه اذا ما يضيعوا كثير في التشفيه لما تلقى مثلا الكونفرنس انترفال مثلا كروسنج لاين اوف نو افكت اوف 1 خلاص عارف انت ما سيجنيفيكانت عارفه ففي حاجات كده فيري كويك وينز فيا ريت برضه مثلا يكون في زي ما بيقولوا تيك هوم مسجز في الحاجات دي مره مره ما نحن قلنا حنتعلم اتس اتس ليرنينج ان بروجرس في جيرنال كلابس فيعني مثلا ايديل مثلا ناس كل مره في جيرنال كلاب يستفيدوا من حاجه ستاتستيكال فحاسس ان الفيديو ده از ريلي جود لانه بوريك السرفايفل كيرف دي مهمه الكونفدنس انترفال والبي فاليو صغيره فور مي هذا تضيف ريلي هيلفول شكرا Thank you very much. في بال بالنسبة للسلايد أيوة عندي سلايد كمان. If we can share it, Dr. Ahmed, it illustrates what you were talking about now. Which one? اللي هي فيها في the abbreviations. I think I have to show the slides again. Yeah. Yeah. Abbreviation. Just just continue, Nazik. Yeah. You think I have to share the slides? Ah. You have to share the slides again, Ahmed. Ma'am, can I ask? Aywa. Give me one. Give me one second. Yeah. Okay. In this slide, we can see, um, or we can illustrate more about the 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 ratio and the values that were used in this uh, this statistical study. So the hazardous ratio is the ratio uh, of the chance of an event occurring in the treatment arm over the chance of event occurring in the control time. Here we can see whenever the hazardous ratio increase, um, that's mean the risk is increase. And wh when it decrease, the risk is decrease, okay? Um, as Dr. Sara mentioned, uh, the confidence interval give us clue that is that this is a study reflect the mean of the true population when it's more than 90s, 95, 96 like this, okay, which is 95 in this study. And the um, the p value is a statistical measure that indicate whether or not an effect is statistically significant. So whenever the p value is more than uh, 0.05, uh, it's it's the probability of the null hypothesis is true. What is the null hypothesis? Is the claim that no relation exists between two sets of that. Okay. So there's there were also a special consideration in this study, which was which were the uh, social demographic clinical data uh, in addition to other suicidal risks such as being single without children work, disability, comorbid substance use, anxiety disorders, ADHD, and attempt suicide previously. And all, all, these, measure, they, all these data were analyzed. They used SAS version 9.4 for the statistical analysis. And to control for the potential selection PS uh, caused by the non-randomization of the pharmacotherapies. So just uh, this is some information to know more about the SAS version. It's a command-driven software package for statistical analysis and uh, data visualization. And it's used to control, randomize, and automate, uh, automate, uh, to produce randomized and automated and minimize uh, data uh, results, sorry, and to minimize the risk of uh, selection tests. Okay? We can come for the uh, result now. Um, I think if we uh, check the result in the graph, it will be there. 
can we go to the graph, please? Next one. Oh, yes, this one. This one, no, the previous one. This one is perfect, okay? No, okay, not this one. The previous one, Yanazik? No. Yes, yes. Yeah. This one, yes. Yes, exactly. Thank you very much. This one. Um, as you all can see, we have the group, the drug group here in the first column, the antidepressants, antipsychotic, the mood stabilizers, benzodiazepines, and ADHD medication. Okay. The next column, we have the um, hazardous ratio uh, values. And in the next one, um, we can see the the graph result here. Okay, it's obvious for us that check check it please concentrate and you you can see that the hazardous ratio of different group drugs. Okay, so uh, if we check the antidepressant and the antipsychotic, we will find the hazardous ratio is more than one. Why the hazardous ratio of the mood uh, stabilizers and ADHD is less than one? Okay, with the superiority of the ADHD medications. And if we check the benzos, uh, we can find it's more than 1.5 in general. Okay. So, how we can interpret this result? If one of the audience can do that. Yeah. No one? Okay. Yeah, into my physical get a study or listen. Yeah. Which is not yeah, the point of the whole journal club. Everybody should read the study in order to be able to benefit from the study. And it doesn't make any sense that uh, a presenter only one who is prepared. I want one of them to if if he get my point and what is the relation between the hazard this ratio and the our results so no problem we said whenever the hazard this ratio increase that means the risk will increase okay so from from this result okay okay Okay. Amr wants to answer. Aywa, uh, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. I was in the ADHD medications uh, mm -hmm. have uh, lowering the risk of uh, suicidal attempt or suicidal completion of suicide. Uh, yes. And to some extent, more stabilizer. Uh, however, antidepressant and antipsychotic uh, mm -hmm. increase the risk of uh, suicide. And I'm just confused. confused. I'm 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 confused. لو لاحظت إن هي ما في ما في رزق مكتوب بس مكتوب ليسيم لكن ما في رزق في الرزق بتاعت ال اللي نال بعده طوالي. Okay, شكراً. Uh, just one point to comment on this. I, I don't think the medication reduced the risk or increased the risk. They're associated with increased risk and they're associated with reduced risk. They're different. Association does not mean causation. Mm -hmm. Okay, and here we're, we're just seeing an association, not a causation. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. there's a there's significant association, yes, especially with benzos. But, but what does that mean, Yang? Into when you see that the, 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 the risk, the basically hazardous risk, is more with a negative or with a positive? Yeah, and what does it mean? Is it 1.5 or the minus 1.5? What does that mean? And I think in, in my simple understanding... It reflects the, it, it reflect the association or reflect the risk. So what... Whenever it, increase, whenever it increase, the risk will be increased. And whenever it decreases, the risk will decrease. But the way they, the, the test explains it in a way, basically, in a period of time, let's say within the 10 years or the period of the medication here, the patient who mm -hmm. 
let's say, for example, the patient who took, took um, ADHD medications had fewer incidents, right? Mm -hmm. that were statistically significant than patients who did not take anti ADHD, like, I mean, ADHD medications. Yes, yeah. that's true. It doesn't mean it doesn't happen at all with other medications. It just means that the risk yeah. is high in the patient. Yeah. And, 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 yes, and there's differences between one medication and another in the same group. We can see differences also. طيب في حاجة مهمة يا نازك يعني ال 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 في حاجة مهمة اللي هي ال ال الوتس بتاع الخضة يا ده معناته عندك فكرة ده شنو يعني شنو يعني ليه في ليه في حاجات عندها aggregation يعني في النص في حاجة برضو وبعدين ال 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 line is longer in in one and and shorter in others do you know what does that mean? No, I don't have clue. Is there any other audience? Yeah, can I say? أيوة ال ال الخط الطويل ده الكونفيدنس انترفال وال ال ال الدوتس دي هي انديكيتنج للهازارد ريشيو الترو فاليو فا وانس الكونفيدنس انترفال كروسنج اللاين اوف نو افكت اللي هو 1 في حاله الريشيو بيكون 1 معناها انسيجنيفيكانت ريزولت اكسلنت كل ما كان طيب فهنا يا اكسلنت ايوه ايوه وكل ما كان ال 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 فاليو حقت الترو فاليو دي بالجهه اليمين رايت تو ذا رايت سايد اللي هي مور ذان 1 كل ما كان ال 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 هازارد ريشيو از مور اللي هو الاسوشيشن از مور والليفت بيكون لس لس طيب وثاني بس انه ليفت اور رايت يعني مثلا الفورتي اوكسيتين هنا از is touching the, the middle line, yes? Like in Bordeaux, very, mm -hmm. very wide confidence interval. I mean, my only result is very, not very accurate. I mean, that in that, it's accurate. Let me tell you, the benzodiazepine, it is very, right? Like in a confidence interval is very, very short, but it's mean more accurate result. Okay. And he less chances of this in that come by chance, the sutfa. مش كده يعني ال ال عندك more confidence about the result كل ما the confidence انت بنت تكون ضيقة وتكون ما هابشة الخط في النص هو line of no effect. yeah thank you. طيب تاني انت قلت الليثيوم ما في ما يخدم موجود يا انا ما عرفت انت هو هو بس الليثيوم is here so why didn't you say was it before? والله انا كانها لقيتني ان وزن ريبورتد الليثيوم ده لكن فعلا اول ما عملت لها تشيك انتبهت كانه هو هنا لكن اي ميس ذس ميبي يا ات از ريبورتد سو ات ريبورتد ذا ليثيوم انا انا جت ماي اتنشن تو اكشلي ذا ليثيوم سيمز تو هاف يعني ا كلير بس انا دونت ثينك ات مايت بي ستاتستيكلي يس ديكريز ذا ريسك كليرلي اسوسيشن ويز ديكريز ذا ريسك It's not yeah. statistically significant. This is no. I, I'm not sure if it is well. Yeah, it doesn't show here. This is. It shows the the interval and it shows the hazard risk, but it doesn't tell us if it's significant or not from this graph. I think it might be the next graph that shows statistical significance. They can have to take a graph to care for the meaning of lines there or kalam da. Left or right is significant. Yeah, you know, the vortex in the can. A line between are very small and uh, and COVID interval very short would have been would have been significant, meaning no association, yeah, less association. Like in plan, who are touching a middle line with very wide confidence interval, so you're not confident in result the significant in significant association. Uh -huh. And in it, when we say negative association, we're talking about fewer fewer incidents. Basically, this is yeah. more protective protective factor. Yani, if if we have to make an yani assessment based on this graph, rioxetine seems to be. Associated with less suicidal attempts, as opposed to benzodiazepine, seems to be associated with significant suicidal attempts. Yeah. So the, the clozapine. Can you comment on clozapine, Nazik? I mean, why people would prescribe clozapine in the first place? I mean, that's a, uh, the clozapine. Yeah. I mean, it's a, yeah. That's okay. A cool yeah. It had excluded the comorbidity, so why is it coming up? And I got the article, but they didn't comment on that at all. They didn't mention it at all, but it's just uh, just an observation. So they didn't mention the clozapine. They didn't mention the clozapine. I, I think it's been practice. 
Because a lot of people will believe that clozapine and lithium, they can be prescribed to everybody, everybody, including borderline personality disorder, in order to reduce the frequency of suicide. They're associated with both lithium, both uh, clozapine have been associated with reduced risk of suicide. However, for a particular population, mainly schizoaffective disorder, mainly schizophrenia, not for everybody, but a lot of people, practitioners, uh, they believe that they can use this for patients with borderline, and I've seen this happening even here. It's not a good practice, but it happens, and that's what it was captured in the study. Might be useful to know how many people actually prescribe clozapine, if you can get that from the data. Yeah. Can continue, Nazik. Very excellent presentation, actually. So very impressed by it. Shall I go to the next one? Yeah. Next slide, please. Next one. You don't want to comment on this one? No, no. Actually, I just selected one to comment. This is this is a cleaner one, and it's easier basically to comment on. Here, it, like, it's risk, awesome. you can see the risk is higher for benzos. Yeah. Yes, the same conclusion. Uh, but the difference here, I'm not sure they're commenting on statistical yeah. significance. I think the study later on talks about statistical significance for benzos being significant here and for stimulants. But it also linked it to admission, is it? Omission, is it linked to uh, omission. Uh, the, the time when it is not given, is it? So it's, um, yeah, if you have mm -hmm. analysis. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, do you want to go to the next one? Yes. Next one, the conclusion. Okay, I think this one is because they had a primary and secondary outcome. And I think this is about the secondary outcome. Yeah, about suicide. Yeah? Do you want me to go yes, to the it's about one? suicide. Completed suicide, this one. Yeah. Yeah? Yes. yes. All right. Okay. Um, in this comparative effectiveness uh, research study of unselected national uh, sample of patients with borderline, the usage of ADHD medication potentially due to diminished impulsivity was consistently associated with reduced risk of suicide. Uh, however, using antidepressant, antipsychotic, or mood stabilizer wasn't associated with reducing the risk of suicide. And uh, even when the potential for classic PS was controlled. And lastly, benzodiazepine was used was associated with a market increase in risk of suicide. And there is some limitation of this study. Uh, I will mention it, in, I will mention them in the next slide. So uh, the limitation were lack of specific clinical uh, parameters, such as the severity of the symptoms, uh, the indication of the pharmacotherapy, and um, that may have significant for suicidal behavior. Also, I noticed that there is a lack of other variables that consider a substantial risk factor, uh, such as the distressing personal life event and losses. And um, also, there were a lot. Sorry? <laughs> يعني البطلة دي قدم هنا طبعا في بناصين موضة زي دي أصلا ماش معليش معليش ممكن تعمل ميوت على الميكروفون أحمد يا سر سيد أحمد أوكي شكرا Also they were lack information regarding concomitant psychotherapy دقيقة يا نازك ال 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 فينش تبي فينش تيا لا لسه حتى ما كان في information regarding the concomitant psychotherapy treatment such as dialectical behavior therapy um, that have been shown to be effective in reducing suicidal behavior. Additionally, the study took place in a high income, uh, predominantly white population, with a government that they have an access for government funded health care system. Okay with minimum cost for the patient. 
So the finding may not be generalizable in other sets. And also, although the PRE2DUP is an accurate with a measure, mathematical measure, it cannot reflect the actual medication usage. That's all. Thank you very much. Very important. Hit about the severity of borderline symptoms. Lanu basically a nasal ended up killing themselves. ممكن يكون هم الناس المور لايكلي تو بي بريسكرايب الانتي سايكوتكس والميديكيشن الثانيه دي. فطبعا ان كوهرت ريسبكتيف ما حيقدر يعمل القصه دي بي كوات ديفيكالت كل الناس اللي تعمل لهم باك باك يعني جو باك تو دو سيفيرتي لكن ذيس از ذا مين ميجر لانه يعني يو كان اونلي سي اسوسيشن بيكوز يو دونت نو وات هابن اي مين ميبي ميبي سيفيرتي اوف سيمتومز ذات ليد تو ذا بريسكرايبنج اوف ذوس ميديكيشن ذات ذي ناو سايينج ات از اسوسييتد. Does that make sense? Oh. Yeah. 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 Why was not this design yani, practical for the study? You mean why they didn't use the randomized control trial? Yes. Design. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, th I think uh, because this uh, study is retrospective in, in the past and the event is uh, negative one is hazard. Why, why did they choose retrospective rather than perspective Randomized controlled. Randomized controlled is the standard or the gold standard here. Because the exposure, uh, we cannot, uh, we cannot like uh, control for the for the uh, exposure, which is taking the treatment or not taking the treatment, and the study is retrospective. No, you, you can control for taking the treatment, uh, but but for how long do you do I, this? I, mean, here I think the time. time. It's the time keeps consuming. The clinical trial it will be difficult because this will will need a, a period of time uh, to study these uh, variables or this exposure. So the time here uh, will be uh, difficult for us. It will make the study uh, more difficult, um, even though it will be uh, more expensive than the cohort study. More expensive, not practical. And even might be difficult, even from an ethical stand of point, like you might be able to kind of get them to consent, like consent is an issue. Um, and again, suicide might be a random event that occurs over a couple of years. Retrospective model, in the other hand, the data is available. The data, this is the national data, is, is saved in a, in a, in a national uh, data, like a mini bank that they have. Uh, they don't need to get much, like they need to get approval based on, like, I mean, you know, they submit the protocol. And they get an easy approval. They don't get to need to get the consent from everybody. They don't need to meet mm -hmm. with everybody. So it's easily accessible. And the information about taking the medication or not, they were able to get around it by creating this model about how uh, whether the patient is taking medication from the pharmacy, from the hospital. Uh, they they went around it and they get a proxy in order to get that question answered. And again, the patient will be on medication for extended period of time, multiple medication, bigger population in order to have a better data. And that's what like a retrospective study here, and that was the better model for this question. I think the uh, weakness for the cohort study is uh, that uh, it cannot identify all the variables. This is the problem, and uh, the randomization will be a problem also. Correct. And, yeah. and you need randomization. You need randomization in order to say like this is not happened by chance, and this is more likely there is a, a difference. Yeah. I think it's because it's a rare event. Suicide is a rare event, so they have to wait for a long time to get the data to generalize it or get something. So, as the author said. Any comment? <laughs> Just, just one comment about substances misuse. That didn't factor at all. We know that is a quite. Uh, they didn't look at it at all. So we know, it's, it's, yeah, and he had him suicide, and that's that they end up com committing suicide for the line. Uh, 
they did mention it's a social demographic and they did mention that third of the clients had substance misuse problems, but they didn't seek to kind of make any statistical analysis of that or the, as any relevance to the people who committed suicide and association with any drugs they have taken. No, they mentioned the substance use. Yes. You mean they didn't, didn't mention? But, and the yeah, consideration is they consider the substance use. Actually, yes, but it wasn't the, yeah. the results actually came as a surprise to me. And I've never thought as ADHD medication stimulants is a good choice for a patient with borderline. I might not still believe it and I might not still mm. use it. But the, the fact mm. that even the, the, the hazardous ratio, we're not talking about a huge effect. It's a small effect, but significant. The fact that this okay. up as a, actually as a potential protective factor is a surprise to me. Mm. I think I think Dr. Yes, because the borderline personality and the um, ADH, uh, they share some of the symptoms like the impulsivity, the mood dysregulation, and the the medication ADH medication work on this to decrease the impulsivity. I, yeah, I think sure. yeah. <laughs> this is like I'm, think, I'm very skeptical here. No, I think I think you're spot on, Nazik. I think there might be you. You may question. Yes, there might be an overlap between the symptoms of ADHD and borderline, and that's why. So some of these cases may not have been borderline anyway. And I don't think they're recommending using ADHD for reducing risk of uh, using uh, ADHD medication for reducing risk of suicide in borderline patients. They're just saying that people who are taking ADHD medication. They, yeah, they, they found ADHD. that. Yeah. No, they're, they're not saying, they're not, they're not suggesting that you should use ADHD no, medication no, okay. to reduce suicide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what yes. is, especially the I think they discovered the association. The association yeah. and they, the patient with borderline personality with ADHD, not not as yes. regular or as to decrease the risk. And, and I'll be very careful recommending ADHD medication or stimulant medication for borderline based on the study. It's interesting and it can lead to more prospective studies. Let's say yeah. exactly when you start a prospective study for a patient taking stimulants and compare them with other patient taking non-stimulants. This might be more meaningful in the future as basically for recommendation. But this is an interesting finding. Hal Malish so I guess Hal Hal can see Malish Lana missed the bit of a general club. Hal can see a um comorbidity my ADHD, yeah, who makano are a stimulant ADHD medication because of ADHD diagnosis, comorbid my borderline. Yes, this is my understanding. Sahih Nazik? Yeah, yes, it was a comorbidity, yes. Just it's not using the ADHD per se for Decreasing the risk. No, there was a ah. comorbidity. Okay, so which makes sense, طبعا يعني لو زين عنده ADHD, the stimulant medication, ADHD medication will reduce the impulsivity in contrast to the benzodiazepine, which will increase the yeah. impulsivity. So you can see that, especially in the borderline personality disorder, usually the suicidality or self-harm attempts are mostly impulsive rather than controlled, planned most of the time. يعني. So, طبعا زي ما قال ياسر جبال هي الاستديه اتس 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 هيلبفول تو نو لكن يو كانوت مثلا يوز ات كده طوال اوتوماتيكلي مع الكوهوت او البوبيليشن احنا بنشتغل معاها لكن مره مره في حاجات زي ميك سنس الليرنينج فيها يعني وين يو تراي اند ثينك وايل ايدج دي ميديكيشن اوبسلي ريدكشن اوف امبلسيفيتي للدايجنوز للناس اللي عندهم اساسا ايدج دي دايجنوزيز فيو كان سي انه دي حيكونوا بيتر مثلا الناس اللي بيكونوا بياخذوا Clozapine or, or lithium, you can argue, for why, for the association. I mean, it, it gives gives you sometimes, I mean, food for thought. Because they become more and more monitored. Both the clozapine and lithium, they have blood 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 level monitoring and things like that. So you can see, for example, there are different treatments that are different. For example, they have halperidol and they can go and they can go. So it's food for thought. But of course, as we said in the beginning, this is all association, not causality. Okay. I think okay. we can benefit from uh, from not not prescribing benzos for the patient with borderline because and, and the uh, association was were very uh, significant. And, and I'll take this very seriously: the, the negative association or the association with risk, association with risk with using uh, benzos was high, actually four times that the the uh, the risk was four times than, than, than the usual. And I'll take this very seriously as a risk, but as a benefit, I will be very cautious. To recommend stimulants for treatment of ADHD just based on this. 
if we have more studies supporting this in the future, yes, that will be imp important and relevant. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, I, I just have a comment. I think uh, what uh, Sarah mentioned is, is, is very interesting. I think it has actually uh, inspired me to think about uh, confounding factors. Uh, I mean, can we consider um, using uh, or patients with ADHD who are on stimulant? Can, can you consider this as a confounding factor? So, or do we have any other confounding factors which uh, could be uh, contributing to these results? Uh, this might lead me also uh, to, to talk, to think about uh, uh, the psycho, uh, psychological intervention. And sorry, Ahmed, for introducing your, in your uh, area of speciality, but I think this might be also, I, I, I'm not sure whether this has mentioned, been mentioned in the study at all, uh, whether the patients are uh, in any other therapeutic interventions uh, like psychotherapy. Thank you. I, I don't think they mentioned this was a retrospective study, so they did not mention anything about therapy. Okay. They did. Did that turn to Arasual Do you want to answer this? Uh, no, no. <laughs> you can answer it. They, they did say that they did in limitation that they didn't include psychotherapy, which is, which is a limitation because people who had psychotherapy might have been more likely to not commit suicide. So, not, I mean, I wouldn't call it a confounding factor, like a significant factor should have been considered. You know, this is not the only observation study on use of medication and suicide. This is, but this is the only observation study in borderline personality. There are other observational studies in personality disorders yes. which found different results. Yes, that, do you want to comment on that, Nazik? Yes, there is a study, yes, but I think there is um, some flaws with the other study and it wasn't, it was inconclusive. Um, and even the um, the group of the classes of medication, it's uh, there were there were no variety of medication like this study. Yeah, I think that they mentioned two observational studies in personal disorder in general, which found uh, positive association with reducing risk of suicide for antipsychotics and mood stabilizers, the stuff we we use regularly for that, the cotyabine and the lamotrigine and stuff like that. So I wouldn't take this as a kind of to influence the practice. I think you need to look at it uh, in, in light of what other studies have done and stuff like that. And, and as, as Yasser said earlier, it's association. It is not, it's not a causal um, kind of thing. And how give it this deal, Anna, because I need to step out. But I'll host. Okay. <laughs>